Rebecca Van. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming tonight to part two of my Beauty for Thought series. And if you missed the last Beauty for Thought series, it was called The Six Reasons Women Wear Lipstick. I've worked in a women's business for 30 uh, something years. And so I mainly every day spend my life working with women. I advocate for women on different issues. I dress them, I help them. There's so many things that I do. I mean, helping them is my fate, but really helping them be better and put their best vision out to the world is really what's fun for me. So. Beauty for Thought is not an A plus B equals C. Here's the moral of the story. Here's our Disney ending. Everybody's happy and we're going to leave. No. Every day I'm with women and there are a lot of issues in the world that women and men are faced with, but mainly women in the businesses that I work with. So I came up with this Beauty for Thought series because I think a way of just getting conversations started is important. Do you agree? Just beginning to have the conversations. Now, I don't have any answers. So the first thing you should know about me is I don't pretend to be a woman or know what a woman does. I don't because I'm not a woman. However, being with women 24 seven, like I am in closets, in places, doing stuff with them, with their families and their jobs. Um, I get to make some observations as a man living in a women's world. So it's really fun for me. So my Beauty for Thought series is really based on my clients. I'm a fashion stylist in the Silicon Valley. I'm also, let's go to the next slide. Um, also the CEO of a startup beauty company here in the Silicon Valley called Harvey Helms Beauty. So I decided to do a beauty brand because of many of my clients like Stacy's here tonight, Janesta, so great to see you. My stylist friend Roxanne's here tonight. A lot of girls came to me and said, um, you know what, Harvey, there are a million products on the, par uh, on the market today, and it's hard to find things. And even though there are a million, there's still things that I don't use, like I hate face makeup, it makes me look like a clown, or it's too heavy, etc. So I decided to get in the business through my hat in the ring with some really good cosmetics that really help you to put your face forward. It's your face, only a little bit better version of it, and it's whisper weight. You'll love it. So, but also tonight, if we can go to the next slide. The thing that women have been talking to me about in the last one was lipstick versus gender equality. For tonight, for our Beauty for Thought series, we're going to talk about ageism in Hollywood, or as I like to say, why your wrinkle cream really doesn't work. Isn't that a great title? Because we all think this. Do you know what I mean? So there's so many issues in our world today that have really come forward, but I think that ageism is important. So what is ageism? What is ageism to you? What would you say? Right. Discrimination because of age, which would be for hiring. Um, and we're going to talk about Hollywood today, and we're going to talk about some of my favorite actresses. So it's going to be fun that way. So it really is ageism in a way is a way to discriminate, but also for me and looking in, at, with some of the girlfriends that I have talking about how we sort of demean people or we devalue people based on what we look like on the outside. Yes. So you know what? used to be that experience meant a lot. We're going to get into that. So this ageism thing, there are going to be some attitudes we're going to look at today. And I don't have a judgment. I'm just putting it out there so we can start the conversation. Agreed? Awesome. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So <laughs> let's dish for a minute, shall we? And this, this happened as I was preparing this second Beauty for Thought. And then I happened to be watching a show. And I don't want to get in trouble with any network. So there was a show. And with this woman right here, and she had this woman right here on his guest. Did anybody see this episode? Okay, so let me tell you what happened. I can't say their name. So this is Megan Kelly. We all know her. You know, she was a serious anchor woman. She's now on another network. She's got a morning show that comes on at 9 o'clock. And then we all know the fabulous Jane Fonda. You know, from Barbarella up to On Golden Pond. I mean, her new thing, Grace and Frankie. I mean, this woman is an incredible actress. So I'll just give you the 411 about what happened. Jane Fonda happened to be on the episode with Robert Redford because they have a new movie out, if you didn't know, and it looks fabulous. And so Megan uh, chose that moment to ask Jane Fonda about her plastic surgery. You know, it's no secret, Jane, that you've had work done. Robert Redford was just sitting there like this. I wonder how this is going to go. And Jane, Jane looked at Megan and said, do you really want to talk about this right now? 
And Megan said, well, you know, I think that women really look up to you, and I think that your plastic surgery is an important statement. Now, that kind of struck my heart like, excuse me, ageism right there from one woman to another around, you have this, you look great because of that. That is sort of, could be construed that way. And Jane looked at her and she said this, good attitude and good posture is my secret and also healthy living. So I just, I wanted to throw that out there because this just recently happened. So being the guy I am, of course, I'm gonna Google some stuff. So let's go to the next slide. And I pulled up these two pictures, okay? So again, we start to get into, these are the last two women we just looked at. So here's Megan here. This is from a GQ shoot that she owns. And this was just recently Jane at the Emmys. Now, what a difference between the last slide and this slide. Isn't that sort of like jaw dropping in a way? Um, Megan got a lot of feedback on this from GQ because we had these sort of things around being an anchor and what women are supposed to look like, which women go through all the time because women play different roles. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with Megan Kelly being sexy. She's a woman, correct? That's one role and she happened to be an anchor on another one. I don't have a problem with that. Then the problem over here with Jane was that picture, these pictures are just weeks within each other, the one you saw of Jane, and then what they did with her at the Emmy, and then the feedback on this, ageism again, is why are they dressing her like Nicki Minaj being 20 years old? So a lot of backlash with an ageist sort of thing came out around these two. So don't you find that interesting? But you know what, we do it too. Yes, we do. So that's the one thing about beauty for thought. So I will have these thoughts at home and we all have a judgment and we all want to tweet about it. We have somebody who loves to tweet right now that we're not going to talk about that likes to put stuff out in the world and cause problems. But for me with these two women, I really feel for not only Jane Fonda, but I also feel for Megyn Kelly right now. I feel for both of them because I think it's difficult at best based on the women I've known in my life, to be able to have to play different roles that require different looks and perhaps different parts of personalities. Like, where's the freedom there? I don't know what that means. But for our discussion tonight, it's really about ageism, so that's why I wanted to really think about Jane Fonda. Has she had great plastic surgery? She has. She looks great. However, what if Jane hadn't had that plastic surgery? What would we be saying today? I know what we'd be saying. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> Don't you love that? Okay. Does anybody know, you can't say anything. Does anybody know who this woman is? Who is this woman right here? Does anybody have a clue? Betty Davis? Okay. Everybody thinks it's Betty Davis. Oh, and you know what? Let me just give you a shout out to KMVT15 here in Mountain View. Bobby Chastain thought it was Betty Davis too. He's the GM. Thank you, Bobby and crew for such a fabulous thing tonight. I really appreciate it. I love to come here and do that. Who is this woman here? Any clue? Okay, I'm gonna give you a hint. They're both the same woman. They are the same woman. It's Gloria Swanson. Does anybody know that name? So. Gloria Swanson in her day, was she was Angelina Jolie of the silent film era. She was the biggest star of silent films. So then, this is her a little bit older, shall we say. So look at the difference here. Let's go to the next slide. So I went back in my memory um, in the 20th century to think, when is the first time in Hollywood where I really thought about um, ageism or being ageist. And do you know the movie Sunset Boulevard? If you have not seen, Billy Wilder is beyond fabulous anyway as a director, but if you have not seen Sunset Boulevard with Gloria Swanson and William Holden, because it's the story of a once famous silent film star who becomes an older actress and what happens to her. So it's sort of like life telling on itself. She did win the Academy Award that year for Best Actress. But it was one of those moments where you see that this woman, who was a big star because she was, at the time, young and beautiful, and as she started to age, Hollywood turned their back on her. And that's not an unusual story, right? Okay, so this is in the 50s, yes? So we're in the 50s in the 20th century. Let's go to the next slide. Now, who are these women? Now, I'll give you a hint. They're not the same person, okay? Hollywood can do a lot of stuff with hair and makeup, but they're not the same. Who is this woman here? 
Okay, y'all all flunk Hollywood 101. <laughs> this is Betty Davis. That's Betty Davis right here. And who is that? She's her biggest rival. What? No more wire hangers. Joan, you get, a, you get a piece of gum later on. Very nice. Joan Crawford. So at the time, so in the 30s, although Joan and Betty were both at the end of silent films, Joan and Betty are mainly known for late 30s and 40s because they were Hollywood's biggest stars. Um, jo uh, Joan Crawford was at MGM. Betty Davis was at Warner Brothers. And they're both great actresses in their own way. So this is in the 30s. These pictures are from the 30s. Beautiful starlets. Let's go to the next slide. Then we're going to move forward. That was the 30s and 40s. We're going to go to 1962. Do you know the movie, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane? Still scarred. Okay. Still scarred by it. Yes. So let's go. Okay, so Whatever Happened to Baby Jane is kind of a horror flick about two women who uh, were stars together in silent films, and then something happens to one, and they're put together in the same house, and it's this horrible horror movie, but it's so worth it to see for how long you have to do it. Let's go to the next slide. So this is those two gorgeous starlets that we saw before, Betty Davis, and here is Joan Crawford. Now, Jack Warner, uh, Warner Brothers produced this, and uh, Jack Warner said, he coined the phrase for this in the 60s, he called it hag horror. Because the first thing they said when they came to the story, I've got this script, Joan Crawford thinks that she can get Davis, because they hated each other. There was a book, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, they hated each other. Crawford says she can get Davis to star in it, because these girls could not get work, because they were considered over the hill ageism, okay? But Crawford said she could talk Betty Davis in and get it. And Jack Warner said, who wants to see those friggin' old broads on screen? I don't want to see those old broads on screen. And then he was like this, you don't know what you're talking about. These are two legendary actresses that will give great performances. So they talked him into it, and that's what happened. Betty Davis actually was up for the Academy Award for this performance. However, Joan campaigned against her and she didn't win it that year. And Anne Bancroft won for The Miracle Worker. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. But the point of the story with ages in here, like these two, like if you don't know their work, when you see Betty Davis um, in Now Voyager or Of Human Bondage or Dark Victory, you realize this woman is a great actress. She's a star. When you see uh, Joan Crawford in Mildred Pierce or Humoresque, you realize that's a great actress, okay? So... Is there a time in ageism where you stop being a great actress? I don't, I, don't, I don't think there is. However, does the world stop wanting to look? I don't know. So, okay, so this is 1962. So let's leave 1962 now. Let's go to the next slide. And let's go a little bit further in more modern time. Now, do you know who these two women are? Who is this woman? Susan Sarandon, very good. Who is this woman? Jessica Lange. Very good. Jessica Lange and Susan Sarandon. Again, at the height of when they're young, they're these young starlets. She's probably in Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman here. Great movie. And she's probably in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hilarious, you know, or in one of those, base, she loved those baseball movies. I can't remember because I don't know anything about baseball, but anyway. And I know Bobby's back there laughing about that. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so here they are today, okay? So we have two really great actresses, you know? They're known. Jessica has won probably three Oscars. She's won several Emmys for American Horror Story. You know, she always gets this. Susan Sarandon, too. These are actresses, but are they getting the kind of work that they used to get? Let's go to the next slide. <gasps> are we going back? Now we're in 2016. Moving into 2017, let's go to the next slide, and guess who they're playing? <laughs> Jessica Lange is playing Joan Crawford, and Susan Sarandon is playing Betty Davis, and what happened to whatever happened to baby Jane? Now, does that, it's not, it's funny, but it's not funny. So it's sort of like, does the same thing still exist today? I mean, look at those faces. 
I mean, to the, to the credit of these two, uh, great performances, and they were both nominated for Emmys. It was Feud, Betty and Joan, and it was about what happened during the making of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. But I'm going to say this. For Susan Sarandon to deliver a performance that gives you any fresh look at Betty Davis, I mean, because we've all seen, you know, what a dump, you know, all the Betty imitations and everything. Susan gave such a great performance, and Jessica Lang outdid herself as Joan Crawford. I mean, it was really good performances. But I, it stopped me because I said to myself, okay, it's 2017, and these two, the work they're getting is to play the two that couldn't get hired because of hag, horror, Jack Warner's somewhere. I don't want to look up or down, I don't know. It's somewhere saying, ha, 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 told you. No. So, but is it just men and women? Like, whose fault is this? Like, when we think about ageism as a society... So isn't that parallel really interesting? So you think 1962, these two women couldn't get hired. They finally did it. It was a Academy Award winning performances. And they actually, Betty went on to do some other things like Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte with Olivia de Havilland. So this gave them longer careers. But then we fast forward into what's going on with women today and how things are seen in Hollywood. But also not only just in Hollywood, it's how we live our lives. I mean, I work in fashion and beauty. I'm the CEO of a startup beauty company. So I know what it's like when you look at aspirational pictures of women and what people buy. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay, so I had to put this up here because everybody laughs about it, but this made me feel, I was so sad. It almost made me cry when I looked at it. Everybody looked at it, and I was just like, this is Barbie? Because didn't you love Barbie? Listen, in my book, Blush, my mother used to use Barbie against me, okay, because I loved Barbie, and I wanted that dream house so bad when I was growing up. But Barbie was that, you know, the go-to girl, yes? She had all the clothes, but she was an astronaut. She was a singer. She got to do everything Barbie. Like, we all wanted to be Barbie, right? I still want to be Barbie. But then all of a sudden, the way the world looks at Barbie, this is about ageism, okay? Let's go to the next slide. So Photoshopped versus reality. So I'd like to kind of move our conversation into where we sit as human beings today, okay? And I'm just going to be really honest with you, I think. Oh, no, I am going to be really honest with you. Would I rather look at an unretouched photograph of my face or the photoshopped version of it. I want to look at the photoshopped version of it. And actually, Philip, my art director, who's sitting in the booth now, the first thing, Philip will take pictures of me and I'll go, now you know what you have to do to those, don't you, Philip? He's like, yeah, I know, I've got to erase your face, okay? So, but anyway, so, but we have become, because of technology, we start to look, really look at ourselves. Now, I'm on camera a lot, and I have been through my career, but I had a friend the other day who's not on camera a lot and is not used to hearing their voice, and they heard their voice, and they were like, oh, my God, I don't sound like that at all. And I'm like, no, honey, you sound like that. You know, so, because people think when they see video that they don't look like that. We do. And also that when you have audio of yourself, actually, I was having it with you, Stephanie. Stephanie and I were having this discussion. Like, when you hear your voice, like, no, honey, that's what you sound like. You know, because in our head... How we look and how we sound is very different than what we feel on the inside. And I actually think that that's the kernel of truth around ageism. I mean, now, like, when I look at photographs of myself, in my brain, I still feel like I'm 20 years old on the inside. My emotionally, um, just everything. And then I'll look and think, oh, you need more concealer, like, especially makeup for camera. But I love makeup, so it's not a problem. But this, this Photoshop versus the reality of it is sort of taking over the world with tech in a lot of ways. You see it, Facebook. I mean, how many of you have girlfriends with a phone, like you're at a restaurant, okay? And you're there, and you're like, let's take a selfie. You want to? Oh, sure, come on over. So you both kind of fight for the position. Do you know the position? Because they tell you, don't face forward. You need to face to the side. So you know your girlfriend who's more aggressive than you. She is going to jam you toward the front and jam her side body in. So she's slimmer here, yes. And also, that you, they need to be up a little bit, so we need to be a little bit more up. So a selfie that should take like maybe 10 seconds is by the sixth one, like, okay, let me look at it. Look, let me look at it. Do y'all go through that? You know you do with your girlfriends. We all do, yes? So Photoshop versus reality, we really do care about how we're seen. And because of technology, 
we get to change what we look like. I'm not sure about that. So I like it in some ways, and some ways I'm thinking, I don't know. So let's go to the next slide, because as you can tell, some things, they're very subtle, but in advertising, you start to see things like when a model is photographed, what they actually do to the body. I mean, just they're, they're minor here, but look at the difference in her waist. Look at her skin tone. Look at her legs, especially here. If you see here versus here, you know? So is it that as a, as a, a global community, we only wanna look at perfection? We don't want to look at problems. I mean, it's, some, it's a question I have. So do I, you know, when we get into beauty and we start thinking, you know, do I want to see a 90-year-old face in an advertisement for a wrinkle cream? You know, so you want to think about it. So Photoshop's very interesting. Let's go to the next slide. So let's talk about the beauty industry. Let's go to the next slide. Um, money versus mortality. And I love this. And let's go to the next slide. There was a great movie called Death Becomes Her. And if you haven't seen it, it has Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep and the fabulous Isabella Rossellini right here. And Isabella Rossellini was one of the original faces for Lancome Cosmetics in the 70s and 80s. Awesome Ingrid Bergman's daughter. So this movie's premise is that this woman can give you um, eternal life, that you'll live forever with a drop of the serum. It sounds like beauty, doesn't it? Like this serum, and I can return you back to your like 1920s body, everything. And, and she's in this scene right here with Meryl Streep, she's like, she's gonna like take her hand and she takes one little drop and the hand becomes like a 20 year old hand again. She's like, give it to me now, okay? Not knowing what's gonna happen. As you can tell, this is also another horror story. Somehow they all end up being horror stories. I'm not sure why. Uh, with these two that they have to live forever and they end up at the end of the movie painting each other with spray paint because they're never going to die but they're chipping etc. It's really interesting. So this whole thought around wanting to live forever, mortality, there's a lot around ageism perhaps maybe in this conversation where you might ask your question, do I not want to look at these images because I'm thinking of my own mortality? I mean, you all have parents, right? My parents have left the planet, so I've already had that moment with them, like when somebody leaves the planet. So you start to think about yourself and what does that mean for you or your family or your children? There's a lot in this, and I believe that that's part of this conversation. Let's go to the next slide. And then there's the beauty companies. And I have to tell you, I wrote a book called Blush, The Unbelievably Absurd Diary of a Gay Beauty Junkie because I love skincare and I love color cosmetics. I have, I've worked in them my whole life and I love it. But I have to say that when we look at some of the images, like when you buy cosmetics, do you look at a picture and think aspirationally, I'd like for my skin to look a little bit more like her. That's gonna make me look younger maybe. Because would you, if this was an 85 year old woman here, and then there was a jar of cream, what would you think it was for? An old person. That's old, old lady cream? I mean, you can say it because that's what people say. So this whole sort of thought of what is this based on and getting people to buy stuff, you know, what is, what are the words like in, with Harvey Holmes Beauty, I like to think of self-care. Um, I like to think of healthy, more radiant, your best version of yourself. So it's not about, you're 50, let me make you 20 again. Yes? But today, the way the beauty business is driven, it's around, you're gonna get a 79% reduction in fine lines and wrinkles and firming and whatever. But really, I mean, if any of you out there think you're going to buy some cream, I'm talking to TV land, because a lot of these girls know me at TV land. If you think some cream is gonna give you a, a neck lift, I wanna sell you some of the products because it's not gonna happen. Let's go to the next slide. Now, I love this. This one stopped me in my tracks. The first thing some people notice is her age. So I put this in front of some people, and um, a person who works at the studio here, he admitted to me that it wasn't the age that he looked at first, Bobby. But then um, some other people, some women that I, I, actually some women I showed it to, are like, the first question was what? What do you think the first question was? Thank you, Roxanne. How old is she? And can't you see yourself at dinner parties like, how 
old do you think she is? Hmm. Do you think she's had a little, hmm? Yes. Have you all done that? Yes. Everybody does. Again, it's ageism. Because there's something around aging that makes us, I think it makes us uncomfortable. It makes us uncomfortable to talk about. Or we don't want people to see us in that way. This is something to think about. Let's go to the next slide. And so we're going to go back to Hollywood for a minute and two examples of some things that have happened to people um, in life um, based on Hollywood, but also because the expectation around having to stay young looking for a long time, it's really hard. This and eating disorders. Now, I'm not saying that about these two actresses I'm going to talk about, but these are the two that got the most promotional press when it first came out because there was such a noticeable difference. This is Renee Zellweger. Both of these photographs are of a, a very pretty woman. Both. They're both pretty. They don't look like each other. So that was the other thing. So that was the thing that came out here, that she sort of disappeared for a while, and then she came back like this. So she had some stuff done. She admitted that. And because she wanted to continue to work. So just like Joan and Betty, just like Jessica and, and Susan, these are actresses, and they love acting, and that's what they want to do. And so when the parts aren't there because they keep going back to younger and that's what they think the public wants, sometimes people do other things. Let's go to the next slide. The other one, this was another amazing one that was really different. I mean, b both of these girls were big stars. You know, they had, you know, A-list box office for both of them. And then there came that moment where somebody in Hollywood said either one of two things get something done or lose weight, okay? Those are the two things. So it would be like, can't you lose some weight here? She needs to lose weight. If you don't know this about Judy Garland, Judy Garland as an actress at MGM, Louis B. Mayer, they put her, when she got, before she was cast in The Wizard of Oz, Judy was cute and she could sing up a storm. She had the best voice at MGM. And so they would see her every day in the rushes with the Wizard of Oz and Louis B. Mayer would say, she's fat, make her lose weight. Judy wasn't fat, she was just a kid, you know? So they would like tie her up, strap her down, give her, you know, diet pills during the day and then downers at night because she couldn't sleep. So Judy Garland's sort of weight, sort of and then later on ageist sort of thing in the end of her career was caused because she wanted to work and she was a great star, but it killed her, unfortunately. So for some of these people, I really feel for them because I know they're great. But this, this woman here is the same inside of this woman here. It's the same, yes? But because uh, to make a living or what all the things that we have to do and because of ageism, people are forced into some situations. Somebody out there might say, she didn't have to get that done, Harvey. Well, that's true, but you know what? I think that if you have become, like, if you were a movie star and you've been at the top of your game, it's not like you're going to go, okay, bye, it was fun. I'm done. I'm all happy now. No, I'm still a freaking actress and I want to act here. So if people are giving you feedback and all the people you're surrounded by saying, you know, you, you got some new lines on your forehead, girl, and you've got this going on, you better do something about it, right? So... I have mixed feelings in this. She could have made some other decisions, but you know what? I can understand why maybe she didn't. You know, I feel for her. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now we're gonna, we've gotten past the what we look like, and now let's talk about who we are and how we perceive each other, okay? Now, our, my beauty company is in Silicon Valley. We're with tech people all the time. You know, we talk about, you know, tech, how it's changed the world. I mean, Silicon Valley really is the new Hollywood in a lot of ways here. Yes? So before we could Google everything, so if you're sitting out there and you're young, there was a time when you couldn't Google stuff. There was time where you're like, gee, I wonder what that is, and you're not gonna know the answer for maybe a year, or you had to go find somebody who actually knew the answer to it, because it's not at your fingertips. Let's go to the next slide. So my thing around this is, Artificial intelligence, AI, versus experience, because that's a moment we're having right now in the workforce in the United States, or when do we become invisible? Okay, I'm going to tell you a really personal story about me. So the other day, I'm in my middle 50s, and I, uh, the gay community is really interesting as well, like with men, uh, other men, do they want you young, you want you older, it's the same thing. I don't care if you're gay, straight, non-binary, whatever you are out there, transgender, 
It's all the same, okay? So this man is really checking me out, and he's cute, and he's age-appropriate for me. I'm like, oh, my God, somebody's really cute. He's looking at me. So I'm just like, you know, getting myself together and everything. And then he's coming over to me, and I thought I was getting ready to say something. And he went to this guy behind me who was super cute and, like, maybe 30 years younger than me. I was like, hey. And I was like, oh. So in a way, because I had this moment where I just, and I realized, oh, my God, I'm invisible. I'm friggin' invisible. I can't believe it. So for some of this stuff, when you think of, you know, what experience meant in the past, you know, as a stylist, building clothes for people, you know, today you can Google things and there, there is a way for you to amass some information, but there's something that that can't give you an experience. Janesta, you're a doctor, you could agree with that. You know, I could go on and watch some YouTube channel doctor stuff, right? And maybe try a few things at home and go, you know what, I'm going to be a doctor too and have my own TV show because I can. No, they probably won't let me do that. So at the same time, we, when we look at ageism, and if you go back and look at those actresses, you think, are they invisible now? Because in a casting room or when you're going to cast people, they are invisible. And so think of some of the people in your own lives that make it personal, like your mom, you know, your dad, your aunts, your uncles, or whoever's in your life, or somebody you work with that's older, you know, that have they just become invisible, or we don't think of them as being modern, or the other word I like with instead of invisible is, am I, have I become irrelevant, okay? When is that moment when you become invisible, or you've become so irrelevant that people don't care what you're, you know, what you're thinking, what your, you know, what your life is about. It doesn't matter anymore. And that is happening in the world today. You know, something to think about. She does have good eyebrows, this girl. I give her good eyebrows. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So this is my other big question. Or, is everything still simply based on sex? Think about it. Do you want to be attractive to someone else? In a minute here, does anybody want to be attractive to other? You can all raise your hands. Everybody in here should do it. Yes, yes, everybody does, okay? So is everything we do or think or identify with based on being sexy, which is based on what? When we were younger or what we consider to be sexy? Do you remember when you were a little kid and the thought of your mom and dad having sex was like, ew! gross that's super gross and if you're a parent and that's happened to you and you hear "Ooh, it's super gross I mean so that's you next time I, they do that I want you to scream out the bedroom you're being ageist stop it so there's something in this so you look at all so we're going to talk about money we're going to talk about advertising and the things that drive us to spend money and the things that cause corporations to put stuff out there to make us buy it it's normally this if you think about everything even toothpaste. You think of toothpaste, oh, you're going to have healthy gums. You're going to do that? Yeah, but uh-uh, because Crest, I want to have white teeth so I can get a date. Yes, check. We've all seen that commercial. Yes. So there's a lot of things around this that we might want to consider. Next slide. Or, based on what I said, combined with forced opinions based on retail sales. If you've ever sat in a boardroom or you've worked for any company or you're a consumer, you know that everything's based on whether it's popular or not, if it's selling. If you get something you like and it's discontinued, I'll, hello, FYI, it means it's not selling, correct? So you fell in love with it, but some other people didn't. So if you take a look at network television, even you know the live streaming sort of networks today, a lot of it's based on, if you look at the advertising, it's either around, am I beautiful? Am I hungry? Am I going to save this? So you think about the basic reasons when you're looking at the images and when you go to the movie theater. If you ever gotten to the movie theater early and you have to watch all that stuff other than the little quizzes and stuff and the stuff they tell you, I mean, it's sort of like brainwashing. You're like, yes, I have to have that. My life won't be complete if I don't. Can you hear that in my voice? You need to go right now and buy that. And that's going to make you really good. Everybody's going to love you, right? Scary, creepy, I agree. Let's go on to the next. So it's, what do you think? And that is Beauty for Thought. Thank you. Thanks, KMVT. So if you have any comments or you have any questions or whatever, you can do KMVT 
uh, 15.org or also send I would love to hear from you. Go to harveyhelmsbeauty.com. Ask me any questions you want. You can also check out my last Beauty uh, for Thought series, The Six Reasons Women Wear Lipstick or Lipstick versus Gender Equality. And I'll see you next month in November. We're going to have a fabulous makeup panel around why it's so hard to buy makeup today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.